In Photoshop CS6, you can type on a path. In addition to that, you can add some different layer effects to the type. But once you rotate that type, you can actually lose the effect. So how do you maintain the effect? Well, what we're, what we're going to go over is creating a path, creating type on a path, and also creating an effect using smart objects. So here we have the beginning of the design or image. Uh, what we're going to start out with is a pin tool. The quick key is the letter P. If you click once, you create an anchor point A. If you click again, you've created anchor point B. This is a basic line from point A to point B. You'll notice in the paths panel, you've just created a work path. But that's not what we want. So we're going to drag that to the little trash can in that panel. We're going to go back and we're going to click. And this time we're going to drag out from that initial anchor point. And then we're going to click another anchor point and drag out again. And what we're doing is dragging out handles from the anchor point. These handles are not actually part of the line, but rather they are having an effect on the line. So think of them as like a magnet pulling on the line itself or the path. So once I've gotten this, I'm pretty satisfied with that. But if later I decide to change my mind, two tools down in the tools panel, is the path selection tool and underneath it hidden is the direct selection tool or vice versa. Using the direct selection tool or the hollow arrow you can click on the individual anchor points you can shift and click on all three and move it around if you wish. Click off the path, click back on and this time let's click on just this one anchor point and if you so desire you can move that anchor point alone by itself you can also move the path should you see like a jagged at edge once you've created it using the pen tool this is a good way to go back in and edit it I've seen some people who will actually go back in and create an entire new path just because there's one jagged edge there's no need to do that uh, the, the other tool is the path selection tool. You'll notice it immediately selects all the anchor points. If we go up to edit free transform, it actually changes to free transform path because we are dealing with a path. You can go to the outside corner of that bounding box and rotate it and position it to just how you want it. Hit the enter or return key and now we're going to go back to our paths panel. You'll notice work path is italicized as is background in our layers panel. Layers, uh, the background layer also has this little lock and that indicates the layer is partially locked. So we're going to double click it and rename it. You'll notice the italicized word goes away which means that partial lock goes away. We're going to do the same thing on our paths panel. Now you can rename this whatever you want. and it no longer is italicized. You can also save selections here um, or you could make this into a selection but it has to be a completed shape. So let's make this a selection and we'll just click OK. You'll notice from point A to point B it's just a straight line so it needs to fill it in from point A or from point B back to point A which is not what we want. So we're, we're not going to do that, but it, it is something to keep in mind. Going back to our Layers panel, we'll see what happens next in the Layers panel when we go over to the Horizontal Type tool. The quick key is the letter T for Type. As we get closer and closer to the path, the cursor will change. It will give us that little squiggly line. Click, and then start typing away. and there we've got it. Going over to our character panel you want to make sure that your type is contrasting or contrasting with the background in this case mine is. Here I've got Myriad Pro which is a good choice because we've got all of these different other options so what we're going to do next is double click on the word think using the type tool it selects that and actually we want to include the exclamation point and let's go ahead and bolden it and there we go that looks pretty good now I'm going to go to the move tool drag it a little closer there we go 
You can hit the uh, Command T or Control T quick keys to edit transform it. Hit return and that looks pretty good. Now sometimes what will happen is you'll be typing and it seems like your type is uh, disappearing or you type it out you can see it over here in the layers you can see it over here in paths but for some odd reason it's just not showing up what you can do in that case is go to the path selection tool make sure you are selected on the path and you're in the layer with the type on it hover over the word and you'll notice the arrow changes to a cursor with a little triangle off to the right of it. Now if you go to the start of the path, see that little X? You can move that X and it actually moves the type starting from the left side of the text alongside this path. Now if you go down, it actually flips it over for you. Now if you start on the right side, you'll notice the arrow actually changes sides you can actually change the position of the ending point. So something to keep in mind you can actually move it all along the path so you can have a huge path and move your type all along it uh, positioning it just where you want it. Now the next thing we're going to do is go back to our layers panel right click on that type layer and duplicate that layer. So we'll click OK. Alright. So going back to the uh, path selection tool. Make sure we're in that layer. Make sure we're on that path. And this time we're just going to flip it over. And we're going to position it just where we want it. There is a slight delay usually with this. And once you're satisfied, there we go. Okay we can go back to our layer, right click on it, uh, excuse me, double click on it, click on gradient overlay, and that's a nice little effect. Uh, we're going to keep, keep the blend mode at normal, opacity at 100%. We want a gradient from black to white. We want it to be linear. And we're going to set the angle at negative 10 degrees, a scale of 100%, and we'll click OK. Now we're going to hit Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC. That's Edit Transform. Go outside the corner of the bounding box. Hold down the Shift key to make sure you get it at 90 degrees. Let go of the mouse, then let go of the Shift key. Hit Return. And it creates this nice effect to where the gradient is actually coming from one side to the other. But unfortunately, that's the wrong position. So what we're going to do is convert this to a smart object double click on this little thumbnail here and it's gonna give us a little warning and basically we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise hit command save on a Mac or control S I'm sorry command S or control S or we can just go to file save close out that little smart object window and there we go now all we have to do is simply click and drag using the arrow keys for more minute adjustments. And there we have it. So we've used a smart object to keep that effect with the type despite rotating it. We've typed on a path. We've edited the path itself using the direct selection tool and the path selection tool. And we even know where our paths are. We've even created different work paths and fully editable paths within Photoshop. Clicking off that, going back to our layers, here we have a nice little design with some very uh, interactive or animated text. It sort of adds to your design.